Welcome to the Creative Brew, helping you keep your creative juices brewing. We're giving out chunks of insight, motivation, and practicality for your creative journey. Narco is just not a company, it's a way of life. Born from the vision of embracing the gnarly spirit, we at Narco are dedicated to crafting American-made products that embody the essence of adventure and freedom. Our mission is clear, to empower individuals to live life to the fullest, unapologetically being themselves and finding tranquility in the pursuit of remarkable experiences. You can visit Narco at narcousa.com. My next partner is Elevate Coffee Trading, and if you appreciate specialty coffee, enjoy outdoor adventure, and love helping elevate the lives of children around the world, then you're going to love Elevate Coffee Trading. Their mission is to extract hope through love, coffee, and adventures. There's free shipping in the United States, and every bag of coffee helps sponsor health and education for children in coffee-producing countries and in areas of need in the United States. You can use promo code ELEVATE21 on your next order. And you can follow their journey on social media at Elevate Coffee Trading. Or you can visit online at ElevateCoffeeTrading.com. And let's start extracting hope together. And this episode is brought to you by Baba Coffee, smuggling good vibes. Baba roasts their coffee beans each week and only offers the freshest coffee. They have espressos, lattes, cappuccinos, pour over, or drip coffee. You can try their cold brew coffee, nitro cold brew, or bulletproof coffee. And boba milk teas. They also have a wide assortment of delicious food. I would suggest you try the avocado toast, mimosas, wine, or beer. On the weekends, you can check out some great music like the Soto 6 and food like Eliza the Shelf and others over the weekend, every Friday and Saturday, beginning at 6 p.m. You can check out everything they got going on on Facebook and Instagram at Baba Coffee. All right. And welcome to a new episode of The Creative Brew, giving you insights on your creative journey. Today, we have Juliette Rodriguez. Uh, she is a brilliant artist, creator, uh, and also works with the Oceanside Cultural District that's here in Oceanside. So really doing a lot to, um, to help the arts and culture here in Oceanside and then really uh, magnify and uplift a lot of uh, really a really diverse community of, of artists, musicians, creators, uh, organizations that that's here in Oceanside and the surrounding area. But uh, I'll let Juliet sort of share her story and um, her origin story, and we'll, uh, we'll start, that, start the show. So uh, Juliet, glad to, glad to have you. Cool, thank you so much. Um, well, I'm originally from Sacramento, born and raised, uh, one of my favorite places in the world. I uh, grew up in a really small town. It's actually a rural community with about 5,000 people living there. Um, moved to a little bit larger of a town, not getting too crazy with it, but about 20,000 people, um, and eventually moved to the city of Sacramento, more central, and kind of um, getting more involved in the arts there, and when I went to college, learning, oh my gosh, there's, you know, there's money to be made in the arts, and a whole, um, a lot more that you can do with it than, you know, what I had seen growing up in a small community, which was um, not a whole lot, so yeah um, yeah that's where I started off so so do you do you enjoy it more in in Oceanside I, I know every every town and you know city has its little you know quirks but I didn't know if you enjoy it more like in the Sacramento area or or down here in Oceanside I wouldn't say more there's kind of like they're different and special in their own ways you know and Sacramento being born and raised there like it has this very special place in my heart yeah um, but I'm learning to, you know, love Oceanside. I've only been here since September and figuring out what's special about it, you know, rather than, you know, it's just a beach town. I mean, I moved here and didn't know anything about it. And I was like, I'm moving to a beach town and I don't know what to expect, but yeah, I'm learning to love it. Oh yeah. Good deal. Yeah. I, I've been here. It's, it's been I guess, 10 years now and, uh, you know, sort of originally from Tennessee, and uh, yeah, it's uh, still learning so much about about the city. And um, yeah, I know the the locals are you know they are uh, you know really loyal <laughs> to, uh, I, you know, I love to that. the city and and uh, I, which is uh, it's always a good thing. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely learn 
you know, they, they love their, you know, local, you know, they, they definitely want to support local and, and um, so they do everything they can to sort of, uh, you know, support and, you know, promote that, especially with the, you know, the people that's been here in the area. So it's, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I know, I, I know just coming back, I usually go back and forth between, um, you know, my hometown in uh, Tennessee and, and here. And it's, you know, it's definitely uh, culturally is d different. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, I, I think out here, I, you know, I can enjoy, you know, seeing different people um, back in, you know, back in Tennessee, you know, you, you sort of see the same people <laughs> over and over, which is, I mean, sometimes it can be pretty cool, but you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's just one of those where it's really, really close knit and, uh, sort of that sort of hometown community, um, you know, it's, a uh, slower pace. So, um, I do enjoy it sometimes in the summertime, but, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I love, you know, the both dynamics of the city. So, um, so right now, I mean, with, with the, the things you got going on, so tell me a little bit, I mean, so I know I'll, I'll, I'll see your, your work online and, and, uh, I know you primarily, um, into painting. I know you, you've done mur murals and, and other things, but I didn't know what sort of what your foundation, um, was in, um, art, art was. Um, well. I think I've always done art in some capacity. Um, I think I just never stopped, you know, like when you're younger and you're kind of like doing the projects in class and stuff. And I just kept taking them home and doing them. And even in high school, like working with pencil and charcoal and just whatever I had available. Um, and then when I left college, I started painting a little bit more and getting familiar with it and I absolutely hated it to begin with like I was not good at it at all and I'm you know very much a perfectionist so if I am not good at it the first time I might never pick it up again but um, I persisted and I you know revisited it every couple months until I felt confident with it and yeah I've, I haven't put it down since and about last year I started kind of graduating into mentorship for murals and taking my work to a larger scale and yeah oh that's great that's great yeah I know um uh, I'm primarily I, I'm actually more of a uh, pencil artist um but uh I know like I said I'm sort of trying you know really trying to experiment more with uh you know with watercolors and you know I, I do a lot of uh you know just sort of realistic sort of illustration I'm always like I said I'm always big into like comic books and stuff like that so that I tend to go that route but um yeah I know I had painting in college and I, I I sucked at it I was horrible at it um I didn't want to touch paint again I, I hate it um I would rather work with you know pastels and watercolors and um mm -hmm. you know things like that but um yeah paint uh painting it was uh oil painting I, I had a hard time sort of figuring that out now it's, it's sort of easy I, I wouldn't say it's easy but I mean even with me doing like more digital painting um I sort of going back I sort of understand the principles but oil could be unforgiving um yeah. so I was like I don't even <laughs> I don't even mess with that um I know I I know some some you know local creators that are really good with with oil and 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 uh that medium I'm like I I, I can't do it can't do it so uh I leave that I leave that to the to the experts so um so I mean, even with your, you know, with your journey, you were, you know, we'll, and we'll piggyback, you're going back to where, you know, you um, really trying to find um, ways of, of actually having a career in, in the arts. Um, I, I know, I know from experience there's a lot of people, and sometimes it can just be the, the environment, it could be just the people that you're around. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a lot of people that, you know, they feel like, hey, you can't support yourself in the arts, or, you know, you feel like, uh maybe there there's a stigma to where like you know you're an incredible artist but maybe you need to get a full-time job or something like that you know what 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 are your thoughts on that so that was definitely a, a thing living in a really small town and not only a small town but like in a rural community you know there's a lot of like my high school is called liberty ranch high school like it's very like out there farming community you know like the track for the trades was to you know become um, a farmer essentially you know learning to run your farm and, and uh, it was really 
um, people were supportive, you know, of my aspirations to be an artist, but uh, very encouraging of, you know, the, not as a job though, <laughs> um, to have this be your hobby, uh, get really good at it if you'd like, but you need to make money other ways. Um, and I think when COVID happened, I was in college and, um, you know, it's such a like shaken time for people and for me and thinking about like, you know, nothing's really promised, like this whole college um, thing that I'm doing and all the work that I did to get into college and my application and how much money I'm spending on college, like it just full 180, you know, and so it made me kind of question the value of it and if it was um, really what I wanted to do. and. It's just like, you know what, if everything's on pause right now, maybe I'll just focus on my art. And that's what I did. So I, I started connecting with other artists that were kind of of the same mind and we kind of started applying for things and yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I know just from my experience, um, you know, my, my mom, she was, you know, a, a real incredible artist and I, I sort of, you know, tell a lot of people like hey that's one of my first like art teachers you know she showed me you know how to create things uh, like collages and and really just being able to sort of be free to just create now she didn't really have the avenue or you know even the, the knowledge or awareness to feel like well I could actually you know do this um, mm -hmm. you know create a career out of this um, she didn't know how to do that but she gave me the framework to be able to um, you know, to learn certain, you know, use certain mediums to be able to mix and, and you know, match with, with different things. And um, so even with that, I mean, I know sometimes it could be hard to sort of, depending on the area you're in, um, you, you know, what, you only know what you know. I mean, it's just one of those where you, you may have the skills and talents, but you may be in the, in a whole completely different, you, you may be in the wrong environment altogether. Um, so um, I, I do encourage, I mean, I actually got a message not too long ago um, on, on social media. Uh, someone had sent me a message and, you know, I think they saw some of my artwork and, you know, they were like, they were glad I just kept going with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they just stop, you know, I, I think with people like you, you know, you just, you know, you, I think you've been really persistent and uh, enough to just keep, to keep going and to, uh, you know, to keep working on your craft. And I mean, I think that's something, um, you know, that that's, you know, I, I'd applaud it because there's a lot of people that's really easy to sort of stop, you know, you feel like, well, no one, I'm not getting any kind of traction. Um, no one sees this or, you know, maybe you're not, you know, not, maybe you're in a, maybe in a little bubble to where, you know, you just can't connect with people. Sometimes it can be a little hard um, trying to do all that by, your, by yourself. Um, do you feel like that camaraderie, like even you starting to connect after, you know, after COVID and starting to connect with people, do you feel like that was, you know, going into piggybacking, going into the Oceanside Cultural District and working there? Do you feel like that was a really easy transition or do you feel like there's other things involved that you had no clue about and you're, you're sort of figuring it out? Um, I didn't really know what to expect with the arts community here, you know. I hadn't really thought about how different it could be, uh, but I see a lot of similarities in a lot of ways. I remember telling um, a friend of mine here that there's a lot of similarities in our arts communities. Even though we do things different, we gather in different places, um, you know, we get excited about different things. Um, very similar because everything that we had as an arts community we earned ourselves none of it was handed to us you know all the opportunities that um we created we sought out ourselves and um really kind of had to create our own organizations our own galleries our own businesses and um with not a whole lot of support from you know the city either financially or even socially to do it um and i see that here and I think that's a big motivation for wanting to be a part of that change, you know? It's like, even if I'm not an Oceanside artist, I understand that struggle of, you know, I feel like I've been doing this, you know, by myself, you know, even though our community's tight, like where's the support from the city? Yeah, yeah, I, definitely coming out here, um, you know, coming from Tennessee, um, I really didn't have that, 
community of like even like the the, the connections that I have out here now, um, just through the podcast, um, the that community, really that community of of creators and uh, you know musicians and all these organizations that you see out here, um, I didn't have that there in, in Tennessee, so it was a little hard. I mean, it's actually really inspiring um, to you know get out here. Uh, you know, really, really, honestly, I was sort of scared coming into a new environment, but um, but eventually sort of connecting with with all these um, organizations and people. Um, it's amazing when you start to see like how many, you know, people that you could possibly connect with out here uh, in some form or fashion. Um, uh, I, I said, I know everyone's sort of doing their doing their own thing, but I, I really feel like everyone has their um, little tribe and and audience that you can connect with, um, especially out here. Um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities if we choose to see it. Um, and, um, yeah, I, like I said, I, I encourage any aspiring creators, you know, if they you know, listen to this episode, um, you know, in the future is, you know, figuring out that like, there's a, there's an audience, um, there's a tribe of people that you will vibe with. You won't vibe with everyone. That's not, you know, the, that is not for you to to sort of uh, uh, to do. No, y- your job is sort of figure out you know ways of resonating, connecting with the with the right people that you know that connect with you and that you can collab with. And and um, so I think everyone has that. Um, what what do you think about that? I think something I really admire and appreciate about Oceanside. It's like not every group of artists or creatives that spends time together um, or supports each other is in one medium. Sometimes in Sacramento, we have in the city a, a very large arts community. So all of the mural artists might hang out together pretty exclusively or all of the musicians pretty exclusively. But I really love that, you know, even though the, the arts communities here in Oceanside are, can be small, there there's variety in there. You know, you have like mural artists, musicians, DJs all hanging out together. It's really cool. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know. So so all the so if they're all the all the muralists, all they all hang out in their own little clique there. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it is sort of sort of weird because I, I I know anytime that I go to a to an event or something like that, like I there's like a wide range of people doing different things. I mean, it's someone that's in you know t-shirts or someone that might be a you know, designer or someone might be a muralist, someone might be, you know, uh, you know, a, a, some kind of a watercolor artist. I mean, this is, it's one of those where it's like, it's like a whole wide range of, you know, mix of people. Um, so it's uh, yeah, definitely cool to see. Um, so, I mean, right now, you know, with the Oceanside Cultural District, um, and I know you're, we, you just had the Arts Impact event, uh, which went uh, very well. Uh, definitely had to, like I said, had the privilege of, of being in this event. But um, what what do you feel like? I mean, as far as future plans, um, or even the response from that, what do you what do you feel like was the response from from holding this event? And maybe and at the same time having um, some politicians, legislators um, seeing this uh, firsthand. What was the response from that? I think. There's a long way to go, for sure. Um, but I do see the value in that event and some of the things that we're starting to do or kind of bringing attention to in the arts. Um, you know, we know that they're there as artists. We're very well aware of, you know, what's going on in the arts community and the opportunities that are available and how great we are basically (laughs) um but not everybody else knows that not everyone else is aware of that and so I think that you know us all getting together in one space and just existing you know and doing what we do and you know documenting our work and sharing our work and you know your podcast and other podcasts like do a really great job of saying that we're here you know and um like the AEP6 study as well we did a economic impact study where we you know surveyed we think collected like 800 surveys here in Oceanside to see you know what is the the monetary impact of the arts here in Oceanside and and that's a national study that we're a part of and you know it's just something else we can use to say hey we need more support we have all the things that 
you know other cities around us have and um so yeah advocacy is a huge part of it and um, advocacy for financial support for programs for um just things that other cities have like residencies and arts education in the schools and a long ways to go but getting the tools to say we have the whole package and you know let's do it basically yeah why, why, why do you feel like that is i mean i, I know um I'm coming from the standpoint of, especially, you know, running a business, you, you have to think about, I'm on, I'm on the cradle side, and then another half is like, I'm on the, you know, the business and, you know, marketing side, um, you know, and, and, you know, having to find that balance, you know, why do, why do you think that is, um, to why, you know, we feel like, especially with it being such a cradle community, um, why do we have so much trouble um, being able to to allocate? you know, money for, for the arts and for the, for the culture, for the arts and culture here? That's something I'm still trying to learn. Um, I think there's a long history of, you know, the government and politics here in Oceanside, and I've only seen such a, like, small part of it, so, um, but I think across the board in any city that's struggling with that and coming from a city that's, you know, does not divert attention towards the arts, um, either just, you know, the community at large or the government. Um, I think from my perspective within the government, you know, those individuals not being exposed to the arts and appreciating and enjoying the arts as people, you know, the arts, not recognizing the arts as a part of their daily life and how it impacts them. And I think um, kind of that like cross-pollination at something like the O Arts event where they can see just how meaningful the arts are to others and it could be just as meaningful for you you know <laughs> I'm sorry that you didn't get you know enough craft time when you were in elementary school and it didn't carry forward into your future life but we can revisit that you know we have a lot to offer and um, yeah just saying that we're here and that you can get involved in the arts come to our events meet the artists like I think it really encourages them to think about us when they're thinking about funding and, and other decisions. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've, I know I've, I've been starting to research it a little bit, a little bit more, uh, just when I have time. And I, I have noticed that, I mean, I, I think the one of the proposals were was the, the government, the, the state government cutting, you know, a, a large amount of um, funding for the for the arts, which um, which isn't isn't great, um, and, and I, I'm like I said, I'm a proponent, I'm an advocate for having um, arts in in the schools, and and um, you know, and I'm I'm coming from a school to where we had, you know, I was an advanced art. Um, they really pushed a lot of the arts um, in uh, in my school, and um, so it's just, it's just one of those where it's um, you know, it, it can be a little disheartening, you know, mm -hmm. for for them to 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 cut something like that because to me I always see if you know if we don't have the arts in 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 the school you know like I always sort of see it to where like you don't know where the next like <laughs> genius you know creator could come from like mm -hmm. one of those schools could have the the next you know um great artist but if they don't have the environment set up for them I mean for that kid I mean you you just never know what they could turn out to to be um or may not even reach their potential if they don't have the you know access to to the arts um even going with uh, art therapy i mean i know a lot of people have been starting to do art therapy now uh, even with the va and, and military um i know just doing volunteer work uh, a good friend of mine a uh, friend of mine marcos he he does a lot of um art therapy with uh humanity showers um they're always mm -hmm. got a lot of the um homeless community doing doing artwork and um, so it's like I said, I, I think with something like that, you know, you you cut out the, you know, you cut out the arts. I mean, I think that's just, um, you know, I really think that's a, a travesty, and and um, you know, I really think that's what what makes life beautiful is is being able to express, um, you know, who you are in whatever creative, you know, manner or expression. Um, you know, it's uh, and I do have, like I said, and we probably could go into another episode with 
you know, school and education and things like that. Um, but it's just one of those where I, it's, um, it's, it's actually sort of weird with California with the amount of cradle output they put out here that they're cutting <laughs> the, the funding for that. It's sort of, it's really weird. Um, so. Exactly. And it's really, I don't know if this is like, widely known but as a cultural district we're designated and grant funded by the california arts council we're not our budget doesn't come from the city of oceanside so it's not you know tax dollars that are being spent for the cultural district's work it's coming from the state and now the state's budget is cut straight down the middle so I don't know what the future is going to hold for the amount of funding we have, like these initiatives, like the grant program, their residencies and things like that we want to be able to do. But just looking all the way up to the state, it's, you know, it's really, it is disheartening. Yeah. Uh, perfect scenario. You know, how would you, well, you know, if the roles were reversed, you know, if we had all the funding um sort of funneled into the into the area what would you what would you like what ideals would you use for it that's a great question um i mean to be honest i have a couple of things in mind but this isn't my city you know and i want to stand by that you know this isn't just you know where i can come and do anything i want i would want to engage with the community and say what do you want to see you know what is what does this funding look like in your hands um and the ideas i have are things that i've already heard from the community so <laughs> i think you know some professional development for artists like learning how to apply for grants how to um you know do murals scale your work up how to apply for different opportunities how to find them um arts education for the youth, a residency program. Um, yeah, yeah, just all the good things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, uh, yeah, that's, um, I always sort of think about that, like, if I had all the funding, like, what would I, you know, like, what would I do with it? Um, and uh, it's sort of weird. I've, I've had some weird ideals as far as, like, if I did have, like, a bunch of funding, uh, like, what would I do with the you know, yeah. sort of something geared towards the cradle community. But um, I know one, like, just off the wall, ideal, crazy, um, was being able to uh, create, like, my own little, um, not really, like, I guess it would be, like, cryptocurrency, like, sort of geared towards, specifically towards, like, the Oceanside, like, cradle community, like, being able to use mm -hmm. that as currency for, the creative community um, and having it fully backed. It's sort of so, something weird, but um, I, I just sort of thought about that, you know, like, you know, what if I could a lot, you know, like, you know, two or three grand for each, you know, creator here, musicians, yeah. creator organization here in Ocean Valley, like, you know, being able to, to do that and sort of backing that with some kind of like, their, like our own little currency um, aside mm -hmm. from the, Perhaps aside from the dollar, I don't know. That was just, I'd been thinking about that. I was like, I, I don't know if that's even possible, but that was just my off the wall ideal. But that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I think funding is huge, like funding specifically for artists, like unrestricted dollars for artists you know without all of these like you have to have a specific project or program just like here's your money you you're an artist we respect and appreciate what you do yeah. and I think that would be great to see especially knowing that with the limited funding we had for the grant program we received 72 applications and with the budget we had we were only able to award 18 oh, so wow. there's nearly 50 something I'm bad at math 50 something applications out there projects that would have been really stellar for the community that didn't get funded because we simply didn't have the money to do it yeah yep so. wow um and I do applaud the the the, the grant winners um is, is that really really great because I know that was that grant was like the what you I know you were telling me the first time in like 10 years that we've actually had funding for something like that so 
um, it's really great for the for the ones that that want it. Um, they like I said, they got the you know opportunity to sort of fund their organization or things that they're you know projects that they're working on. So that's um, that's that's great. Um, so right now, I mean, what's uh, what's inspiring you right now? Um, I think well for my creative work or for like my job. Uh, it could be. Either or, or both, or just anything in general, like just something that, um, you know, that piques your interest, like something like, wow, it's uh, it's actually pretty amazing. Um, I think something that's inspiring my work, and it's taken like a really weird turn. This is like my most recent piece, and it's very like abstract and, um. I just I started painting I was like I want to get my hands on the materials like I feel like for some reason today I need to touch the materials <laughs> and so this is a finger painting that I did and I think something that really inspired this piece as opposed to some of my more like um representational work or like stuff that's like planned out like that yeah um is kind of feeling disconnected from art in a way you know like this kind of advocacy work takes a lot of like mental energy mm -hmm. even if I'm not in the office it's things that I'm thinking about constantly and um I think it kind of forces me into this um uh, space with my art where I'm like I just need to make it like I don't even care what it looks like I just need to get in there with some paint and see what happens and um so in a way it's kind of inspiring but also it's just kind of changing my work, I guess. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that that first one, I guess the the one we talked about, that one sort of caught my eye right off the bat. Was the uh, I guess the one you were just doing the the finger painting. Um, <laughs> now I have I have looked online and sort of seen some of your cleaner like mural um, work, which is I mean amazing. Uh, I love the colors on it. Um, but uh, yeah, that one sort of caught me. Um, you know, just just when whenever we got this you know, video started, I was like, wow, that, that one looks pretty cool. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, um, you know, running a business, I, I do, I have a lot of those moments to where, like, I just want to, like, switch to something like pencil and paper and mm -hmm. just, you know, draw and create something. Um, a lot of times I'm always, you know, doing a lot of digital work, but um, even doing, like, the coffee cups and stuff like that, that's just, for me, that's a way of, like, getting sort of disconnecting and just working on um a weird surface and making yeah. it making it work so um that's been almost a healthy little experiment for me sort of seeing what you know what I what I can do and and really trying to push you know what I can actually do with with that sort of medium so it's actually pretty cool um but um yeah yeah that's uh yeah sometimes we just need to disconnect and just get our hands on on something and just go to go to town um so uh creative tips uh what what is some creative tips or tips for for our audience um just centering your practice you know amongst like all the things that happen in life you know especially as we get older like all these different commitments we have and you know, to your health and to relationships, your job, like finding ways to ground your creative practice in that and not lose sight of you being a creative. And it's very easy to do so, you know, especially in our society where it's often treated as a hobby or, you know, not a priority. You kind of have to, to do that work yourself and, and just don't forget it. Don't get lost in the, the mix. Yeah. Yeah, I know used to that. That's that's a great tip because uh, I, I know used to, um, you know, just years ago, I used to sort of feel like I had to separate everything. I had to separate, you know, my work, my business from my actual creative pursuits, or just, you know, just anything that I'm I'm creating, or, or if I'm coaching or training, I was I keep that separate from everything else. Um, and now, I, you know, the more that I, I talk with people like you and the more that I, I get a lot of insights and knowledge from, from people, um, the more I start to see, is, see everything as just art. It's still, you know, it's just I'm expressing it in a different creative manner, 
Uh, but even when I when I cook, um, like I love like uh, I'll I'll make all these recipes, but I never like everything's different. So if I had to like replicate a recipe, like it would mm -hmm. be like another. I may add some extra seasoning, or I may add something else to it. Um, but for me, that's like a creative expression of like mixing and matching and like seeing what works. I, I by no means I am like some you know five, you know, three star, you know, Michelin, you know, shelf or anything, but <laughs> it's just one of those to where like getting different ingredients and like mm -hmm. making it work. Um, that's to me, that's, that's creativity. Uh, I mean, even, you know, my mom, you know, she was, um, you know, being a single parent, like being able to make it work with, with two boys, um, mm -hmm. that's creativity in, <laughs> to itself. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and even with, uh, you know, people you know the things they have to do in, in their, you know, normal lives, you know, sometimes we feel like, well, I'm not creative. Well, if you can find different ways of like making it through the day, you are using creativity in some form or fashion, um, to do what you can do. Now, obviously we get people like you and me that we practice that on a daily basis. Um, or we have the, the environment to do so. But I mean, everyone's creative in their own own right. You just have to figure out um, what works best for you, what's your mode of, of expression, and and just being consistent with it. Um, sometimes we just don't like and like like you said. We sometimes we just don't center recenter ourselves and getting back to that to that to that space. Um, I know I, I for I know many times I have to sort of recheck myself and sort of get back when I got things going on. Um, I have to like recenter and, you know, sort of get back to the core of like what, like what is making me happy right now? Um, you know, being able to just create something and not feel like I have to be perfect with the end result. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, that's a great tip. Um, and that's something I know I have to recheck myself on a lot of times is just recentering myself, um, in those situations. Um, I think sometimes as an artist like I think about how that is kind of always yelling in the background like you need to reset yourself for your art you need to get back to your art and sometimes I I wonder um about non-creatives or people that don't consider themselves to be creative like where does that come into play and you know do they have that voice in them that you know, says this is the answer, you know, recentering yourself and creativity is one of the reasons that you're feeling off balance, you know, I sometimes I wonder and I, I don't know, because I'm not, you know, I always have that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's really a great question. I mean, that's, I think that's one of those where we may have to bring a, a non-creative uh, quote unquote <laughs> on the show one time and, and uh, ask that question. I, I know that some of the people that I bring on that, you know, they tend to be um sometimes it could be you know entrepreneurs maybe they're you know building products or, or things like that but even even with some of them they're always sort of in that ideation or creation mode so um I, I think for someone that you know maybe feel like they don't have a creative bone in their body or maybe i think they have to change their perspective because what they see is someone creating some incredible painting or or masterpiece and they feel like well I just draw stick figures. I'm not really creative. Um, and that I think that's something to where I think those skills can be learned. I think eventually people sort of go into their uh, unique style on things. But mm -hmm. I think I think for a lot of non creatives they just don't make the time to actually practice on certain things. I know, matter of fact, you just brought up something really good. Uh, my sister-in-law, um, she's actually in... in Reiki and energy work and stuff, but um, she really hadn't. I mean, she she had painted sort of on and off, but she recently just had the urge to sort of go into um, more watercolor uh, work. And really, now she's really creating um, a lot of uh, great, you know, great watercolor uh, pieces. And I think just finding the time to actually work on it and mm -hmm. sort of being in that space. Um, you know, I think I've seen it with, uh, even with, matter of fact, another story, I've seen it with um, just going back to humanity showers and I, I'll, I'll watch people, homeless, you know, individuals go in there and just create amazing paintings. And I'm like, that that was already in them. They just didn't have the mm -hmm. environment to 
the environment was, you know, they don't have the environment to be able to um, be consistent with it. You know, they only, you know, they can create what they can create. You know, maybe they're there. That's the only time they can actually make something, which gives them joy. But at the same time, too, like, you know, they really don't have that consistent space to feel like they can be centered and be safe and they can create. They just don't have that. Um, but from what I've seen before, I mean, they're, I mean, I think just finding the space to just be able to sit down and you said center yourself and be able to just enjoy the process of, of creating. Um, I think some people just don't make the time for it. Some people would rather, you know, and, and no judgment, but some people would rather sit down and watch Netflix um, and feel like, you know, they're, you know, getting their, you know, sort of numbing their brain or maybe just sort of chilling out. I, I think for me, like, being able to just to distress, like for me, like I love being able to just draw and sketch. Like for me, that's distressing, <laughs> you know, uh, as opposed yeah. to me sort of like, you know, not really, I, I wouldn't say dumbing my, my brain, but I think there's more productive things that we, we could do. And I think just people just don't make the time for it. I think something about uh, teaching workshops, because sometimes I do teach like art workshops or painting things like that and uh, something that I've come to realize is that for other people th that art is stressful like it's super stressful to make art and I, I'm sitting there like mind blown when I find this out like it's my de-stress so I'm approaching it like isn't this super cool and exciting and easy and everyone there is like this is really hard and I want to go home like <laughs> so I've had to change my approach you know with that in mind to really almost convince people why art is um, good for your balance or, or whatever your creativity is, is really good for your balance. And um, yeah, I, I really wish that was taught early on for me, you know, and for everybody, you know, taught that um, it can be a really great tool for your mental health and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, uh... Yeah, that yeah, it's one of those where um, even, you know, I, I think just growing up, you know, it's just one of those where um, my mom was really good about she she didn't tell me what was right or wrong. Um, a lot of times, I was just in the mode like for me, being able to create with her was a joy into itself. So uh, even like, like I said, we would make all these incredible like paper machés and and collages. Like she was showing me this when I was like seven or eight years old. And it was just, that was something that was like natural to me. Like that was just something like, it was like playtime. That's, mm -hmm. we just make stuff. And um, so I think just being in that, in, in that environment or being around people that, you know, they're not going to, you know, I, and with her, she never like stressed me out. You know, she never said like, Hey, you know, you, this needs to be this way or this, you know, something's off. It's bound. No, it's just like, you're just in that process of, of creating. And um you know, so I, I think, and like you said, I think if you can knock out the the, the stress part of it and and get away from feeling like, hey, this has to be perfect or this, you know, this arm or this, you know, whatever you're trying to create has to be like the most perfect piece. It doesn't have to be. Um, I think it's just everyone's perception, what you perceive is is what it what it needs to be. And um, you know, sometimes, and I, I've noticed it before, even with the the homeless that you know they'll they'll paint. Sometimes I can tell off the bat, like as soon as they start painting, I can tell if they're having a good or bad day, um, mm -hmm. depending on how they paint. Sometimes they'll they'll start to put a lot of bright colors. I can tell they're having mm -hmm. a really great day. Or when I when I start to see black and navy blue, and they're just oh, I was like, okay, you're mm -hmm. it's maybe you might be a little depressed. Something might be going on, uh, but I never tell them, you know, hey, look, you know, maybe you need to do this. I just uh, allow them to to sort of be in that space and express how they need to be, and that's that's the best best thing you can do is being able to get that off your mind and express it in some form of fashion um in a productive in a productive manner that's the best thing you can do and I don't know about you but I feel like myself and every other artist we have some story about you know an art teacher an art experience where we're told like you're not doing it right and it's like right what are you talking about like that's not even a concept you know unless you're trying to teach me a very specific technique maybe I'm not doing it right but I'm just doing it different you know yep yep it's uh yeah it's uh 
yeah, that's something I, I, I've had that experience before, um, you know, and it's, I, I think with, uh, honestly, I think with my teacher in high school, she was really good. Um, shout out to Miss Kidwell. Um, she was really good about allowing me to um, be in my own style. Um, I already had that sort of comic book style way back in like high school. And she, like I said, I, I think she just, she encouraged it. Now I could draw like realistic, um, you know, uh, pencil drawings, but my, like I would, I love more of the dynamic sort of bold comic book style. That's what I love. Um, but she encouraged it. And, um, you know, it's just one of those where like, even let me like create my little comic book when I was uh, in high school. And even when it was like, it was like the first, almost like the first iterations of like Photoshop and Illustrator when I started graduating high school, um, like she let me like test it, test it out and try it out and, and see what works. And um, so I think it's just one of those, like having those teachers that they, you know, you want to teach them the foundations, but then sooner or later, let them sort of go off into their, into their own style. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I'm big on. Show them the foundations and then let them, let them express, you know, however they, they need to be because everyone's going to be different. True. So uh, before we get off here, like I said, this is a pretty, pretty cool conversation. It's not only, this is probably the first episode in a while like we, we've got to talk about art. I've been bringing, I've been starting to bring out some, some local creators and we've been talking about, um, you know, their, their, their artwork and, and um, even a little bit with AI a little bit. Um, but um, I know it's, it's always refreshing for me to be able to, you know, conversate with a fellow um, creator and, and, you know, someone that, that's here in Oceanside that's really um, trying to help uh, bring, bring awareness to, um, you know, being able to, for, for creators to have a sustainable career. Um, you know, I, and I think that, I think, I do think that's possible. Um, and um, hopefully, uh, and I, like I said, I, I don't just, I don't think this show is, you know, I'm not on the, you know, political side of things, but I do keep aware of what, what's going on. And um, I do hope that they um, allocate more, more funding for the, for the arts, because we do, we do need it. Um, so uh, before we sign off, you know, what, what are some words of wisdom that you can uh, share with our audience? Hmm. I don't know. You're going to ask me that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just, yeah. Any, anything mm -hmm. that's on your mind that you feel like, uh, would resonate with with people when they listen to this episode um, or in the future like what's something that maybe something that you've you know that you've heard or something that's that's hit you recently that you know you feel like well I think this is a, a really good learning lesson just keep your head up you know trust your intuition you know don't get lost in imposter syndrome. You know what you're doing. You know better yourself better than anybody else. And yeah. I like that. I like that. Short and sweet. Um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, yeah, it's just one of those, sometimes um, it's, you know, and I, and I ask that for, for everyone because I do feel like people, everyone has that inner wisdom that they need to share. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. they just don't have the space to share it. Um, so I do, I do encourage that. Um, and yeah, sometimes the, 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 the more simple answers are usually the, the, the most profound. Um, and I, I, I think just being able to keep your head up, I mean, sometimes it can be hard. Um, there's sometimes it can be people that, you know, that feel like I know with depression and mental health, it's really huge. And especially in the creative community, um, being able to sort of, you know, stop take a breath, um, understand what's, you know, what you could be in gratitude for, um, understand that, you know, you take it day by day, um, understand that you have an amazing talent and gift um, to share. You just, like I said, just, you know, find ways of, of getting around the people that's going to help empower you and, and support you. And um, yeah, keep your head up. I mean, that's, not, that's the only thing you can do. It's really, really easy to sort of look down at your phone and sort of see what everyone else is doing and say, wow, I like, I wish I could get there. Um, no, you just, you need to, you know, look up, you know, be in gratitude for the things that you do have. Um, understand that it will get better. 
um, mm -hmm. if you allow it and uh, keep creating and uh, just keep expressing. That's the, that's the only thing you can do. Um, so uh, it's been a great, great show. Great episode. Um, thank you, Juliet. Uh, thank this, you. this episode is brought to you by some of my great sponsors. Uh, I'm actually drinking a uh, Create What You Love uh, coffee mug right now. Those are at the Studio Ace Art Shop. So quick, quick shout out to them. Um, and then one of my sponsors, actually what I'm drinking on is Elevate Coffee Trading, uh, based out of the Dallas, Texas area. And uh, they hope they actually help extract hope with every uh, drop of coffee. So they have an amazing story. Um, the things that they do, uh, like I said, they usually do a lot of mission trips to uh, Guatemala. Um, and a lot of their proceeds go to help coffee producing countries, uh, such as like Guatemala, uh, in their coffee villages and in uh, areas of need in the Dallas, Texas area. So I've been a great partner. Like I said, I've been, been able to partner up with them with a lot of different things. I actually, um, recently um, spoke to uh, to some classrooms uh, there in the Dallas, Texas area. And um, so it's always cool, like sort of sharing my story and, and really helping, hopefully helping aspiring young creators. Um, so you can check them out at elevatecoffeetrading.com. And um, they're on Facebook and Instagram at Elevate Coffee Trading. And then um, another sponsor is Baba Coffee, um, one of my great sponsors here in the Carlsbad, in the Carlsbad California, um, smuggling good vibes and good coffee. So they actually have uh, live music every weekend and um, they, they have a wine club too as well. So uh, actually a coffee and wine club uh, if you're interested in both. So uh, you can see all that information on their website at babacoffee.com. And then uh, also no luck, um, they actually create uh, American made uh, flannel and accessories and merchandise um, based out of Oceanside, California. Great, another great sponsor. Um, love their vision, love the mission uh, behind it, and uh, you can check them out at allskillnoluck.com. Uh, um, so those are my sponsors for today, and um, you know, as always, thank you, Juliet, for coming on. Uh, if you want to, oh, also too, uh, where can people get in touch with you? Uh, what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, my Instagram is Juliet underscore Elise underscore. And then I also run the Oceanside Cultural District page. So if you have local events going on or just want to chat, you can find me there. My office is also at the Oceanside Public Library downtown. If you ever want to chat, I'm always open to talking with artists. That's great. That's great. Hey, once again, this is me. This is Juliet. And this is the Creative Brew. Be creative. Stay inspired. Stay on the ground, but no, I won't take it. No, we won't take it. Life is about to give you ups and downs. All the wins and the outs and the smiles and frowns. They will tell you to settle down, stay on the ground. But no, I won't take it. No, we won't take it. The same